thank you. Good morning. Good morning. We welcome you this morning in the blessed name of Jesus the Christ. We welcome you to Tree of Life in Harmony Ministry of Church, a church that is Christ driven and truly kingdom focused. Where the Reverend Phyllis Scott is our senior pastor. Psalms 118, 24 says, This is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. Thank you. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah, Lord. We just worship you all the day, Lord. Hallelujah. Yes. Woo! Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for another day. So thank you. Oh, Jesus. Jesus. Every Sunday, we start our service with the scripture. That's in the book of Psalms 122, verses 1 to 2. This is a service, a psalm that we say each and every Sunday. And I want to deepen your spirit and in your heart each and every Sunday. So we're going to stand and read that word of God in the book of Psalms 122, verses 1 through 2. And it says, I was glad when they said unto me, that me go into the house of the Lord, my feet shall stand within thy gates, O Jerusalem. If you stood for the reading of the holy word, you may be seated in this holy presence. I was glad. I am glad that God allowed me to get up this morning and walk into his house to worship him this morning, to praise and to glorify him and his holy name. He opened up the doors of the church for us to come back into the house of God, to kneel at this heavenly throne, to take communion on this first Sunday, and we dedicate our lives back to him. Just one more time. Thank God for just this day. I was glad. You should be glad to be in the house of God. To say thank you. He brought us in all we thought. We worked hard. We did everything we needed to do. And we asked for one thing. To come here and to worship you. Nothing is too hard for you. Simply. So this morning. Pray that you read this psalms over again and get it in your spirit. This is one that we do every Sunday. And now let's go before our Heavenly Father, looking at those of our prayers. Let us lift up Brother David and Sister Monique the Lord. And let us continue to lift up Sister Pamela Wilder. Let us continue to lift up in prayer Sister Imani Packwood. And let us continue to pray for Brother August and his wife, Sister Jerry. And let us lift up in prayer, Sister Leslie Jordan. And let us lift up in prayer, Brother Tracy Lee. Let us continue to lift up Chief Brian Armstrong and the Oakland Police Department. And let us pray for all countries that are not allowed to Yes. And let us always continue to lift up Pastor Scott and her family. And now may God's love, God's mercy, God's compassion, God's giving power be upon all those who have been lifted up in the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Making our petitions known to our Father and our community. Lord God, for peace this morning. Lord, your word says, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called the children of God. Oh, yes. Lord God, we pray for only the peace that you can give, God. We know, Lord Jesus, that you've already made a way out of your way, God. And peace truly does start with us, God. It starts in our heart and with our actions, God. Our relationship with you, Lord God. And we're praying for those, Lord, who are robbed of the peace in their land, God. Who are robbed of the peace in their household, God. Because of decisions that are not their own, God. And we pray, God, that you would help us to be peacemakers, God. That we may be called children of God. That we may seek you out in our decisions, God. That we might seek you out, God, in our actions, God. That we might seek you out in our words, God. 
that we might be peacemakers, God, that we speak life, Lord God, that we look to you, Lord, that we not lean on our own understanding, God, but that we lean on yours, Lord, that we look to our word, God, and we look to our spiritual leaders as you call us to do, God, that we not be puffed up in ourselves, Lord, and ignore what you put in place, because we know it all, God. We've done it all, God, that we can make decisions all by ourselves, God. Let us not be so foolish, God, to ignore what you told us, God. And you told us so much, Lord, that we may come into spiritual obedience unto you, Lord, and those things that you set up for us. We pray for our spiritual leaders, Lord, know that they are on mission for you, God. We pray, God, that we be at peace, knowing that you said yes, man and woman, to speak on your behalf. Lord. And be at peace with listening to those words and letting them fall on good soil, God. And doing what you call us to do, Lord. Let us come into submission under your rule, under your authority, and all those things that you put in place so that we can be successful in you, Christ Jesus. We thank you and we praise you all today, God. We lift up pastors, God, and every pastor that is leading the church all today. And we pray for you that you make us ready to receive God for us all today. In Jesus' name, we lift up these prayers and let the church say, Amen. 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 And now our pastor, senior pastor, Reverend Sam Scott. Praise God, everyone. Praise God for you. All
Maybe you didn't know it. Uh, the new American Standard Bible, and it goes on to just call it out. We don't want to call it out. But here it calls it out. It says, um, an unclean demon. He just calls it out. Right. We don't want to call it that. We want to call it wicked. We don't want to call it come on, come on. everything we want to call it, but we don't want to say it's a demon. But if you believe in angels, you got to. Come on now. If you believe in heaven, you got to believe. If you believe in God, you've got to believe that there is a demon named Satan. Yeah. If you believe in angels, because see, there were one of angels. So you can't get around it. So here it says that there was a man in the synagogue possessed by the spirit of an unclean demon. Come on. And he cried out with a loud voice because the demons were in control. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Somebody come to me that I'm going to this morning. Trying to explain to you uh, the behavior of some people are not theirs, but they belong to a spirit that is unclean. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. And it, it says, Hi, what do you what do we have to do with you, Jesus of Nazareth? Don't mean they don't know God. Mm -hmm. God is very particular. He knows everybody in his house. He knows who's in his house. He's very particular. The, the, the Christianity is not declining. God is just shifting. He's calling people out. And some people don't want to be healed. Some people don't want to be transformed. Some people Man. don't want to be delivered. Man. He's calling them out. And those very people that are in the church that he's calling out will then go out and say, I didn't learn nothing. I didn't get nothing. Right. Mm -hmm. right. Hallelujah. But here it goes on to say, 
have you come to destroy us? They knew why Jesus came. He came because he's particular. Remember where the man was? That's right, that's right. Come on. And he goes, I know who you are, the Holy One of God. Yes, they knew yes. he was God. They knew he was the Son of God. No, Christianity is not declining. God is shifting. All right. Identify. Help me out. With parents. We have children. We don't let those, uh, anybody be around the children. God's not going to let anybody be around the children. Gonna fall tonight. He came over by the way they act. Yeah. He came over by the way they talk. Yeah. Hallelujah is calling them out. Yeah. There will be an army that will be raised up. Will you be in it? Will you be in it? We allow you in his house. And Jesus rebukes him, saying, Be quiet. And come out. And when the demons had thrown him down in their midst, he became of them without doing any harm. Everyone was in amazement. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For Jesus showed authority and power over unclean. He's dealing those that are not him. Showing you the ones you must separate yourself from. And asking you a question in the midst of it all. Will you be called into the night? Will you be? Paul goes out all the time, all over the world. Come into the house of the Lord. Give thanks unto the Lord, for he is worthy. To be praised, hallelujah. Who could resist such an invitation? Only those with an unclean spirit and a lack of desire to want to praise God or reject the call to holiness. Only those that not want to be in the presence of God. Not that they don't know that God is with us, and God is amongst his people, but they choose not to want to be there. And so what was the message on that day? Authority. Man, unto his spirit. To come out, and they must flee. And so, if you are going to be in God's house, hallelujah, you're going to be in God's house. And I'm talking about the holy kingdom, that kingdom come, that will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Yeah. If you're going to be in that house, yeah. prepare your spirit. Mm. Right now in the time of favor, mm. clean out anything yeah. that's not of God. Allow God to yeah. come into your life. Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. And he will come. Yeah. And those unclean thoughts and those unclean ways and those unclean actions, thought, word, and deed will have to flee because there's nothing, hallelujah, unclean can stand before the presence of God. No. I rebuke that sentiment in the name of Jesus that Christianity is the God says it. Will be done on earth as it is in heaven. I believe there's a separation taking place. But the great cloud will rise out of this separation with all power and with all authority. The question is will you be in this house? Amen. God's holy word. And, mm -hmm. and we will be in the book of Luke, 15 chapter, verses 4 through 7. Oh, mm -hmm. And I will be reading it from the King James Version. Amen. 
That's Luke, the 15th chapter, verses 4 through 7. And we can stand for the reading of God's holy word. And it reads as such. What man of you having a hundred sheep, if he loses one of them, do it not be the ninety-nine in the wilderness, and go after that which is lost until he finds it. And when he has found it, he layeth it on his shoulder, rejoicing. And when he comes cometh home, he called together his friends and neighbors, saying unto them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep, which was lost. And seven says, Say unto you that likewise joy shall be in heaven ever one and over one sinner that repents. Let me say it again. It says unto you that likewise joy shall joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repents. More than over ninety and nine just persons which lead to no repentance. May God have a blessing to the hearers and readers and doers of the holy word, you may be seated in his holy presence. Glory to God. That's what we made this morning.
Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God, for using someone like me, Lord God, an ordinary, everyday person. Come, Lord God, stand behind this holy desk and present the word to Lord God. And I pray will change the lives of people and did not cause them to think, to give them thoughts to pause as to whether or not their life is in order. I pray, Lord God, that you use this word, Lord God, to help those to see that they don't have to be where they are. And when anyone is ready to change their lives for your sake, you are there, Lord God. And then, Lord God, help me, Lord God, to deliver a word of compassion for those that are lost and led astray, Lord God. For you are the great shepherd that looks for all of your sheep, Lord God. Whether they be black, brown, yellow, whatever, you don't care. You're just looking for your sheep, Lord God. Those that know your name, hear your voice, will follow you, Lord God. So, Lord, we just thank you, Lord God, today for using me, a simple woman, Lord God, to deliver a word from an extraordinary God. And this is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Are you ready to come to the church? I pray you are. We've heard the song, we've heard this welcoming scripture. I pray that you're ready to come into the Lord's presence right now. Some of you may say, well, I just came on. I just got here. I, I have not come in to his presence. I didn't hear the song. So I'm just inviting you to come into his presence right now. In the name of Jesus. I know that we've had busy weeks all week. We've had trouble on our job and trouble in our homes. We've had troubles in our community. We look at TV and all we see is trouble and distraction, destruction. But right now, I want you to know that the light is shining. Mm -hmm. That the light is shining and is going to cast out all darkness in the name of Jesus. And you are welcome to come into his marvelous light. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. It is, it is useless either of soil of natural piles of dust to come into the sanctuary of the Lord. It, it is useless for you to bring trinkets or any objects to come into the house of the Lord. You come. Come as you are with your burden. Come as you are with your heart broken. But just come. For you are the salt of the earth. You are the salt of the earth. The things that make the earth worth hearing and living and being in God's people. But if we lose our flavor, then what good does it do? The word of God said it does no good when salt loses its flavor, but to be casted out. So come into the house of God. Come into the house of God. But you can't come unless you choose to be a disciple of God. A follower of God. For it says, therefore, no one can be my disciple who does not give up all his possessions. That doesn't mean that God, Jesus is not calling you to give up and be without. But he's saying that they have to be the least of what's valuable to you. And I must become the most valuable to you. And then you're worthy to be his disciple. So come. Come into the house of God. Come into the presence of God so that you can be filled.
filled back up. He can be filled with his power and with his grace and with his anointing. And we can be called the children of God and stand proud and worthy that we are children of God, the living God. Today, my scripture topic is coming from Luke, the 15th chapter, verses 4 through 7. And the title of my sermon is, Are You the One? And I want you to capitalize one. I want to focus on the one. That means it's personal. When I focus in on one, it means it's personal. Am I the one? Matter of fact, change it. Say, am I the one? Am I the one? Turn to your neighbor. Come on. Turn to your neighbor and say, am I the one? I don't know. We'll find out. I don't know. The Gospel of Luke. Let me tell you a little bit about the Gospel of Luke. It portrays the long-awaited Messiah, Jesus Christ. It, it introduces you to the character, the love, the compassion of for everyone in the book of Luke. It shows you how much Jesus loves uh, women and how much he loves uh, men and Gentiles and Jews and how much he loves Sinners. So today you can look at somebody and say, you know, that, that's me. He loves me. I'm a sinner. Thank you. That's me. He loves me. I'm a sinner. We don't like to say that, but when you find out that Jesus loves sinners, that he has no fault against sinners, other than that they don't repent, but other than that, he has no fault against sinners. He loves sinners. And this book of Luke emphasizes the kindness towards sinners and people of all races, backgrounds, and situations. In the book of Luke, it captures the kindness and the love and the concern that Jesus has for every person on earth, Jews and Gentiles. Jesus presented here in the book of Luke as the perfect man who was truly interested and every person on earth, regardless of their statue in life, means you can be a king or a queen, or you can be the lowest. He's concerned about everybody. Somebody say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Because that includes me. He didn't leave you out. It includes me. Everybody else may have left you out, but it includes you. They may have left you out because you don't have. They may have left you out because you're poor. They may have left you out. Because you're black, they may have left you out. Because you're a woman, they may have left you out. Because you're blind, they may have left you out. Because you're sick, but Jesus yes, had compassion for everybody, regardless of their situation. Yes. Today, we can take that comfort in the word of Jesus found in the book of Luke, and we can embrace it. We can embrace it and be encouraged from it. Anybody need any encouragement today? Yes, yes, we can yes. take it and be encouraged. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. His words of healing, regardless of one's affliction. Yes. Hallelujah. Healing one's uncurable sickness, such as the lepers and leprosy in the Bible. Yes, Casting out unclean spirits. Yes. His open-mindedness toward women and ministering to them such as Mary Magdalene, who struggled with demonic influence. Mm -hmm. Tell your neighbor, that's still a problem today. That's still a problem today. Because you know they're still here, don't you? You know they didn't leave, they're still here. Jesus had no fear of challenging the norm. Yeah. He, he was a rebel and a just rebel for righteousness in the face of many obstacles. He, he wasn't afraid. He told the truth. So that the truth could set you free. Yes. Jesus had no fear of challenging the norm, especially when the norms stood in the way of someone receiving what? Their salvation. As he used every opportunity to bring people unto him. Yes, he didn't waste time worrying about what the scribes and the Pharisees said. In other words, the leaders, what they had to say. Yes. That you can't preach on a Sunday that you have to rest. No, the Lord said if there's one hit one that needs to be healed and it needs to be healed on a Sunday or a Sabbath, I'm going to heal them. I'm going to deliver them. He came to break the norms. Hallelujah. Aren't you glad about it? 
You see, because many of us would not be here today if Jesus didn't break the norm. If Jesus didn't go against the grid. In the Bible that I'm going to read you, you'll see the scribes and the Pharisees said he sits with sinners. How can he be a man of God right. sitting with sinners? What, what's up with that? He broke the norm. And he used every opportunity to bring people unto him, bringing them out of darkness and into the marvelous light. He was a shepherd that would not be content with 99 out of his 100 sheep. He was going to look for the one sheep that was lost. Yes, Lord. Are you the one? Is Jesus looking for you? Are you the one? Have you fallen down and you feel like you can't get back up? Have you been in situations in your life that have made you feel unworthy that you just can't go before God? You've done too much. See, that's a trick of the devil to make you think that you're not worthy. Well, I came by today to tell you that you're the one that Jesus is looking for. Yeah. It's not good enough for Jesus to have a church filled with people and don't come for the one that's not there. Mm -hmm. It's not good enough for Jesus. It's not good enough for Jesus to have a pulpit full of preachers and the one that needs to be there couldn't find his way there. Mm -hmm. Not good enough for Jesus. Mm -hmm. He's looking for the one. Yeah. Today's world teaches just the opposite. Today's world teaches you that if somebody messes up more than one time, that means they are done in your life. And you know we've done that. We put people out and said, you know what? You have messed up one too many times with me. You, you, you've gone against everything I believe in once too many times I'm done. What if God did that with us? What if he said to us, you know what? You've messed up too much. I have no more time for you. I will not look for you. Right. I will not love you. Right. I will not care for you. Where would we be? Right. Well, the majority of us would not be in church today. That's right. The majority of us would not be praising God today. Yes. See, because God is a life changer. Come on. He's a life changer. He wants to change your life. He doesn't want you to stay the same. Right. And he knows that you didn't get this way overnight. Hallelujah. Yes, that 30, 40, 50, 60, 70 years you've been doing the same thing over and over and over and over again. Mm -hmm. And the Lord God Almighty said that one day you're going to get tired. Yes. And when you get tired, I'm going to be there for you because I'm looking for you. You're the one. Yes, You're the one that was in church. You're the one. You're the one that was praising God. You're the one. You're the one that was looking for a better life. You're the one. You're the one that was trusting all the wrong people. Now you need to trust me. You're yes, the one yes. I came for. Yes, yes. You're the one I died for. Yes. You're the one I got to go that cross yes. for. You're the one I took that beating for. Yes. And look at this. And you're the one that I rose. See, there was a major message in what Jesus did. Yes. When you look in the book of Luke and you follow his life, that was a major message for those of us that are sinners. I, I love it. I love this text. Let me get it in. I'm going to start at Luke 15, 1. Now all the tax gatherers and the sinners. I, I'm going to stop right there because I had to go there because it said and the sinners. So right there it separates a, a population, a class of people from another class of people. Look what you said. All the tax gatherers and the sinners were coming near okay. to listen to him. Mm -hmm. Because how many of you know the change comes from hearing? Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How many of you know that if you don't hear the word of God, you can't be changed by the yes. word of God? Hallelujah. Yes. Yes. And so if the Lord had set, shut down the doors yes. and said, only bring me those that are not sinners, right. the room would have been empty. All right now. See, the church is filled with sinners. Huh? Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. But sometimes you want to say that we, we're blessed and highly favored. Right. It's all right to be a sinner as long as you're a sinner that trusts in God yes. and looking for God for deliverance. Hallelujah. Yes. That means you don't have to put on airs. You, you don't have to make believe that you got it together. Yes. Hallelujah. You know why? Because when you fall, yes. when you trip up, 
When you lose your way and no, and are no longer a part of the fire, a fall of sheep that are going in the direction of the Lord. When something in your life changes and you change, when a circumstance hits you that caught you up guard and now you're not in the church, right. I want you to remember that God first found you as a sinner. And he's still looking for you as a sinner. And he's still bringing you into the fold because you are the one. Not the one that's perfect. Not the one that's holy. Not the one that does everything right. You're the sinner. You're the sinner that's lost his way, that was in the sheepfold and lost his way. You were the sinner that was in the choir singing but no longer sang. Hallelujah. You were the one that was preaching that's no longer preaching. Hallelujah. Because one thing that we never lose is that we will always be a sinner. Yes. Saved yes. by his grace. Hallelujah. Yes. Saved by his grace. Yes. And so the sinners came together. See, see, see. You don't have to walk around with a bag on your chest that says, I'm a sinner, not unless you put the next sentence to say, but I'm delivered. Yes. Hallelujah. You, you don't want to you don't want to uh, uh, celebrate your sin, but you want to celebrate what God did with it. Yes. Hallelujah. You want to celebrate what the blood of Jesus did with it. Hallelujah. You want to celebrate how Jesus died for you and rose so that you could be delivered from your sin. So I sin less than I did before. Hallelujah. You hear what I say? I'm not sinless. But I sin less than I did before. Hallelujah. I'm not wallowing in my sin. I'm not basking in my sin. Hallelujah. Uh, but sometimes when we can't admit where we are and admit who we are and admit what we're struggling with, we fall away from God. And then God says, I'm not satisfied. I'm looking for you. Because he looks for those that have lost their way. Is it you? It's okay. It really is okay. Because you can come back. This is the favor time yes. of God. Yes, Lord. As long as you have breath, yes. you should praise the Lord. But as long as you have breath, you can come back. If you're out there and you feel ashamed, then only shame is not coming back. Hallelujah. Look at this next thing. And so I'm in 15 and verse 2. And both the Pharisees and the scribes began to grumble, saying, This man receives sinners. What, what is wrong with him? I told you he broke the norm. And, and, and he's eating with them. In other words, he's socializing with sinners. Mm -hmm. And there's a major statement in that. Yes. As I said earlier, before, in, in the earlier part of my sermon, he loves and comforts all. He is a God that transcends our own understanding of pain. Mm. Hallelujah. He transcends our, under, our understanding and gives us a new way to look at our struggle and our pain. He tells you it's okay to struggle. It's okay to hurt. But no, you're not hurting or struggling alone because I came for sinners like you. You are the one. So why are you hiding? Come on now, why are you hiding? Why are you hiding? Why are you trying to act like you're okay? You know, how you doing? I'm okay, knowing that you're hurting. How, how, how you doing? I'm fine, knowing that you're as far from fine as you can be. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Why are we hiding? Because we have put another S on sin. We put shame. Shame on you, you sinner. Shame on you for doing this. Shame on you. For being caught up, shame on you when we ought to be saying, Come on, he's looking for you. Yeah. He noticed that you weren't in the choir rehearsal, he noticed that you're not on the usher board any longer. The Lord noticed that you're not in Bible study, yeah. the Lord noticed that you're not on worship, and he comes for you. Yeah. Hallelujah! Because he loves to find sinners. 
Oh, this Jesus, this Jesus of ours. Yeah. So different than anyone we've ever met before. Yeah. This Jesus of ours. Yeah. So filled with love, more so than we've ever seen before. Yeah. Oh, my God. Some of us have gotten so used to suffering that we don't know that he came to take our suffering from us. Some of us are so used to being treated badly that we don't know that God came to love us despite it all. We don't think we're worthy. We don't think we're strong enough. We don't think we're young enough. We, we have fallen into the ways of the world, but I stopped by this morning to tell you that you've not met the Jesus that I know of. You're worried about what the world thinks. Because the Bible reminds us that the world is passing away yeah. and so are its desires. But he that what does the will of God will work yeah. remain forever. Yes, Lord. Bless his name in this house. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Then after the scribes and the Pharisees, they had a problem. They did have a problem. Yeah. You met people like that, they got a problem. Yeah. They got a problem with you trying to go back to church. Well, let me tell you, for every level, there's a new devil. For every level that you try to climb to get closer to God, there's a new devil who slap you down and tell you why you can't do it. Don't, 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 don't be shocked if it's in your family. Not everybody in your family is praying that you continue to be in the presence of God, that your life will be changed. They don't like you with a changed life. They want you to be like you used to be, wretched woman or man you were. They don't, they don't want you to live a holy life. They don't want you to have joy in the midst of the storm. Yeah? And they most certainly don't want you to have no faith. Because what they want is you to depend on them. Yeah. They want you to be like them. They may not realize it, but in essence what they say is they want you to die right along with them. They don't want you to have life and have life more abundantly. They grin in your face. And remember that song, I know I'm telling my age, but smiling faces, tell lies. Now, y'all may not remember that. Some of y'all may be too young. But it was the truth. Smiling in your face and waiting for you to perish. And Jesus, Jesus says, those are the ones, when we talked earlier about the edging out, those are the ones that are edging out because they don't even want you to get into the kingdom. And so they tell you that you're not worthy. You can't be in church. You wasn't designed and made like that. You can't do all of those things that those church folks do. You're not worthy enough. You're not smart enough. You didn't did too much. You did too much wrong. What do you think sin is? Sin is wrong no matter whether it's a big sin or a little sin. Mm -hmm. Sin is sin and sin. Yeah. And the word of God said that Jesus sat and ate with the sinners. And then he told the scribes and the Pharisees that were of the religious law. See, them the people I'm telling you about. Those people right there, the scribes and the Pharisees were those of the religious law. Mm -hmm. They're telling him, can you see him? You know you see him. Balled all up in the knot, hands closed across the chest. Who does he think he is? Well, Jesus is a mover of God. Yes. He wants you to move from where you are to where you need to be. And until we are in the presence of God, we are not where we need to be yes. to get into the salvation and the kingdom that he's preparing for you. I told you, he's preparing a house. Mm -hmm. I have many mansions. Hallelujah. Did he say that? I prepare a place for you. I prepare a place for you. I have many mansions. He's preparing a place for you, but are you going to be there? Or are you going to fall to the tricks of this world that tells you that you've done too much? To be back in the church. So you hide in shame. You and your sin and all the people that are so happy that you're hiding. So have you ever noticed that when people fall away from the Lord, they become angry? Mm -hmm. They become, they, they, their ears are closed to hearing the word. Uh, uh, that is a gradual decline. Hallelujah. A gradual decline 
to the destruction of that individual. Because the word says, you learn when you hear. You gotta be able to hear the word of God. And so verse four makes it real clear. What man among you, this is Jesus speaking, mm -hmm. if he has a hundred sheep and has lost one of them, does not leave the 99 in the open pasture and go after the one which is lost until he finds it. Stop right there. That tells everything right there. Mm -hmm. It tells you right there he's not satisfied. Jesus is not satisfied because the word of God says, I don't want anyone to be destroyed. I want everyone to come into repentance. What does that mean, repent? I'm a sinner. Admitting I'm a sinner, I sin. That's what I do. And I'm repenting, Lord, because I want you to forgive this sinner. Mm -hmm. Not that I won't ever stop sinning, but I sin less because I know more. Because I've been listening. And I've learned because I'm hearing. My ears are open. My eyes are open. Hallelujah. My heart is open. I hear you. And so he tells them, I'm looking for the one that got lost. Mm -hmm. I don't care how much time it takes me. I want that one that got lost. He was, it was me. It means he was in the sheepfold. Mm -hmm. Look at that. He was in the sheepfold. He was a monster. He was with us. She was with us. She was amongst us. They were with us. They were amongst us. And one left. He didn't ask why. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He didn't find out the details, uh, the nitty gritty details. The ugly story, he just knew they were gone. Hallelujah. He didn't care what color they were, what their background was, how educated or lack thereof. He went for the one. Look at this. I'm the one. So are you the one? It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. You don't, you don't tell nobody you're not the one. It's okay. It's okay. Reverse. Five. And when he has found it, he lays it on his shoulder. Look what it says, rejoicing. Mm -hmm. Rejoicing. Mm -hmm. He doesn't rejoice in a sinner that is gone. You know how some of us do it. I'm so glad they gone. <laughs> they was getting on my nerves. They wasn't right no way. They could never sing the right tune. They was always late. The church moving in, talking about, excuse me, excuse me. <laughs> you know how we do it. We, we just glad they go. But here it says that he rejoiced. He put them on the shoulder. He, yes. he carried them back. Yes, Lord. This is Jesus. Talking. This is what he does. Can you imagine how they were looking at him like, God, oh, what's wrong with you? He carries them back, rejoicing. Yes. Yes, Verse 6. And when he comes home, he calls together his friends and gossips. No, he doesn't say that. You know how we do it. Guess who came to church? You ain't going to believe this, honey. Had the nerve to come to church after all they did. You know how we do it. Just talk about people. People don't want to come back. Yeah. We, we do what we call shame salvation. Yeah, we right. shame them right out of church. Yeah. And when he comes home, he calls together his friends and his neighbors saying to him, rejoice me, with me, for I have found my sheep which was lost. Mm -hmm. This is how he rejoices when even one comes back. Yes. He had 99. You know how we do it. We got enough members. We don't need no more members. Our church is busting loose. We, we got enough in the choir. We don't need another choir member. We, we got enough on the usher board. We got enough. They want to be a minister. Oh my God, I'm going to leave the church. We do all of that. But here, he says he gathers together and rejoices because there was one missing. If you are the one, he's looking for you and he's waiting to rejoice in your return and you're coming back. There's no shame in where you've been. There's no shame 
and what you've done. He's rejoicing over you coming back, turning around and saying, wait a minute, I have lost the, the greatest opportunity in my life, and that is to be a part of his flock, to be considered one of his children. What greater call is there? Hallelujah. Verse 7. I tell you that in the same way, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous persons who need no repentance. The joy is when one realizes where they are and turn from their wicked ways. It says if one joins the church, if one repents, if one comes home, the heavens rejoice. Do we, do we stand up and shout or have we given up on people? Do we celebrate when people come back to Christ? Or do we talk about them and try to shame them out of the church? Have you picked up the phone and called somebody that has not been on the prayer line, that has not been in Bible study, that has not been in Sunday service? Or you just throw up your hands and say, oh, well, that's their life, let them go. Until the Lord says it's done, until the Lord says it's the end, the heavens are still open looking for the repentant heart. Are you the one? If you're the one that he's looking for, hallelujah, I want you to just say to yourself, it's okay. If you're the one, I want you to say this prayer with me, Lord Jesus. I'm the one. I'm the one that lost my way, Lord. I was shamed to come back, but now I'm back. And today, I want to give my life back to you. For I believe, say this thing, I believe that you are the Son of God. Hallelujah. Come on, Jesus. I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe that you died on that cross for me. Hallelujah. And I believe that you were buried in a tomb. For me, that sinner, for me. And then I believe that you rose from the dead. I'm that one. I'm the one, Lord, that you're looking for. Hallelujah. I believe that you're sitting on the right hand side of your Father with all power and all authority. I'm the one. Hallelujah. You're looking for in Jesus' name. Amen. Mm. You're the one. Just prepare your heart for him. There is no shame mm. in you slipping away. Mm. We're all sinners. Yes, Lord. Saved by his grace. Mm. Sometimes, Lord God, circumstances, obstacles. Mm. Demonic spirit, yes, wrong association yes. can get in our way. Yes, Hallelujah. Yes. But you, God, yes. can break every yoke and every chain. Oh, yeah. It stops us. So all we have to do, Lord God, is make ourselves available to you yes. and say, I'm the one. Yes. I'm the one you are looking for. And when he comes, the heaven rejoices. And when you are saved and back into his grace, the Lord rejoices. Yes. And so do the angels in the heaven above. Yes. Blessed be the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord God. And if that's you, I welcome you back yes. into the house of the Lord. And we here at Tree of Life celebrate. Let's put our hands together in anticipation of somebody. Somebody. Somebody.
Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for that awesome word on high. Amen. Pastor Scott told us that Jesus loves sinners. Amen. He's not looking for perfection. He's not. You just want to trust the Lord in something. Let's trust him in his word. Let's trust him in what he says he's going to do. Amen. Let us be a part of the work of the church that must go on. Let us make sure that we are here to receive each and every person, each and every sinner, each and every believer that wants to come home. Amen. And so right now is the time where you can give back into this ministry, into the, into the work of the Lord, the kingdom building, that happens in God's house. Amen? Amen. And if you are blessed by the sermon on today, you believe that somebody might have been saved today, and you want to be a part of this magnificent work of the Lord, we will share with you how you can give on today. If you're joining us online, if you're here with us today, prepare your gifts to give back to the Lord. And if you're joining us online, you can give us a call at 510-688-7437 and ask your church, your class leader to come by and pick up your tithe or your offering. You can also give via Cash App. Our Cash App name is Total Church. You can visit the website empoweringlives.com and click on Contact Us and click on Donate. If you are joining us today, you want to be a part of that kingdom building from right where you are. Those are the ways you can do it. If you are in the house of the Lord right now, you can come from wherever you are to give back just a portion of what the Lord has blessed us with. Amen. You can come from wherever you are to give back in this kingdom work. And wherever you are in this beautiful time when we are allowed to give back to God. Hallelujah. God sets this up as a test of our faith in who he says he is. He doesn't need us to do anything for him, but he asks us to. Yes, and it's yes, a blessing yes, for us yes, to be yes. a part of his kingdom work. Yes, this is a time of blessing. And as Pastor said, this is a time of favor. Where we can trust him and lean on him for everything and give with a grateful heart. Just because he is God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And so, Father God, we come before you, Lord, just first saying thank you, Lord. We thank you for every hand that gave, whether they be in the house with us, Lord, or joining us from afar, God. We thank you for every opportunity you gave to give. And we Ask, Lord, that you use these blessings, God, to continue the kingdom work here on earth until the day we see you. We say thank you, mm -hmm. and we praise you. We lift up the shepherd of this house before you mm -hmm. and ask that you bless her in the name of Jesus. And let the church say amen. 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 Thank you, Lord Jesus. And we will prepare for communion, but just a few church announcements before we do so. We would like you to know that if you have any questions about the sermon today, any prayer requests, you can visit phyllisscottministries.com and leave a question, a prayer request. Uh, you want to join the church and you're not sure how, visit phyllisscottministries.com and send us a message. And it will go directly to Pastor Scott. Amen. Mm -hmm. You can also learn more about the ministries. And the things that are happening as you sow a seed into this ministry, the Motherhood Foundation is a ministry supporting women and their children in their time of need. 
There's grief counseling information about legal services, housing, shelter, medical services. If you stand in need, you're a mother, you know a mother, and you stand in need of help, contact us at the Motherhood Foundation at gmail.com or 510-688-7437. If you would like to be a part of the Daring Me to Heal, which is another ministry here at Team of Life, led by Pastor Scott, transforming and renewing a hurting, hurting generation, you can also call that number 510-688-7437 and learn how you can join a six to eight week training on self-care. Is it now a wonderful time to learn about self-care in the time the world we live in? Also tomorrow we will have a book club. And we're studying Grace, written by Max Lucado. And we're in chapter nine. Unsweet hearts. Yeah. Learning how to implement grace in our own lives and give grace to others and receive the grace that God has for us. Amen. Yeah. So if you would like to join us, we're doing that tomorrow on Zoom at 6 p.m. And now we will prepare ourselves for Holy Communion. Amen. you at home today, um, and you want to share in communion, uh, we often suggest that you can take a saltine cracker or uh, something of that nature, and uh, if you have any great juice that you want to commune, uh, you can. But the best way, I'm going to ask everyone to be out the camera, the best way to do that would be for you to come to church. Amen. And then when you come to church, you're able to ask me Amen. And have it uh, done in a way that you can come to the Lord and confess our, our past discretions with the Lord and ask Him to forgive us. Yes, Lord. The Bible says that we are to uh, share in Holy Communion as often as we want. Yes, Lord. And so the church is kind of set aside one day and all people can come in and uh, repent of their sins and ask God to forgive them and then we commit themselves to God by symbolizing that through the taking of a symbol of his body and a symbol of his blood. So you can do it as often as you want. But the church is set aside for the Sunday. It is a holy day. It is the day that we think about how far we've come, things that we would have liked to have done differently. Thank God that we're woke this morning. And yes, thank you. We will start working on those things that are good. Now, if you are one that has decided to stay in your way, you're not ready to repent. You're not ready. The Bible tells us, and you should not take anything. Because to do so would actually wreak more harm on you than good. And then the Bible says it uses the word condemnation. Or condemnation or sin or hurt or judgment upon yourself. So we want to be in the right mind and the right spirit and the right heart. We want to be able to say I'm making this commitment because I know that I need to, that I've fallen down and I'm getting back up. That's what it symbolizes. Not our profession. Yes. Yeah, no. But that we're falling down and we're getting back up. Yes. And so I'm going to ask Brother Amy to hold up the Father, in the name of the Son, and the name of the Holy Spirit, I ask, Lord God, that the Holy Spirit may be just acceptable in thy sight. No, Lord God, it is not your real body. And no, Lord God, it is not your blood. For your body was in for our own salvation. And it took upon every sin in this world that we may have life. Blood poured down your side in the pain yes. of what you went through. Every foot, every beat brought pain. Your blood and your body was not given freely. So we take it freely and we thank you for it. But then, gentlemen, do not be hurt. We are symbols. We are symbols, Lord God, of our belief in you. They are symbols, Lord God, of us desiring to repent 
we come before you with a thanksgiving heart and cleaning our lives before you. It's a symbol, Lord God, that we know what you did. It's a symbol, Lord God, of how you died for us. It's a reminder of what you went through for us. So in the name of the Father, Son, and the name of the Holy Spirit, bless these symbols and those that would partake. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. And if anyone that would like to partake, won't you come to the altar? Now you would open up your and everyone has it open if you would just lift the symbol up. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Ghost, we break it because the body will not hold at this point. And we take it in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. Forgive us for our sins, Lord God. Forgive us if I thought we're the deed, but we find you, Lord God. Forgive us, Lord God. And now, if you would take the second portion, which is the representation of his blood. And I ask the children if they would stop right now and have them sit down. Sit down, because this is a very sacred time. Have them sit down. Thank you. Sit down. They will come up in a minute. And won't you break it in remembrance of the, of the Lord? Having renewed your covenant, won't you go and sin no more? Now the children come up. We know that the Lord has given your life to the Lord Jesus to tell him to thank you. And make a commitment. And we know that these little ones are not old enough to make a commitment. I'm going to commitment to the Lord. And so, but we also know that the Lord said, don't keep the children from us from me. Allow them to come to me. And so we anointed them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. So and we ask the Lord God to be with them. To have his hands protect them on them. To help them in their coming to their going. But to allow no unclean hands to touch them. We allow, we ask the Holy God. Hallelujah. In the name of the Father, the name of the Son, and the name of the Holy Ghost. We ask the Holy Spirit of God to be upon him. That no hurt harm or danger be upon him. God, this is your man child. Won't be your man anymore. This is your man child. He wants to be a protector of his children. A man child. Won't just be a man of God as well. A man of God. A man of God. Hallelujah, Lord God. We bless your name today, Lord God. We bless your name, Lord God. We bless your name. In the name of the Lord, we honor you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah. All this month and until I finish, I've been reading the gospel of Jesus, and it's really a reminder. Amen. It's a reminder of who he is. Yeah. It's a reminder of why he came. It's a reminder of what he did while he was here and what he's still doing today. You know, and really, and it, I know we've all read it, but to go back and read it with intent. Yeah. With the intent of coming closer to God and knowing a little bit more about him. It really broadens your perspective of how important the kingdom of God is yeah. and how important our relationship is with God. Yes, and for us to make sure that we have a relationship with yeah. him. Yes, to remember his kindness. To remember his love, 
to remember his glory, to remember his power. Hallelujah. I just really want to remember this in the name of Jesus. So now as we get ready to leave this place, never his presence. Hallelujah, Lord God. We ask, Lord God, that the Holy Spirit of God be with each and every person represented in this place. We pray, Lord God, that the anointing of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ be upon us. We thank you, Lord God, for allowing your Holy Spirit to be here today. We pray that the hearing of the word will change our heart yes. as it relates to our relationship and our position and where we are in you. And if we are the one, let us come back with no shame mm -hmm. and be received by the church and by those that are in the church mm -hmm. and be received and the joy of the Lord will be mm -hmm. rejoicing within the heavens. Let us, God, come with thanksgiving in our hearts, Lord God, and not fear. Not fearful of what man or woman will say, but mm -hmm. only rejoicing that the Lord has found you and have made you back a part of his fold. Now, God, as we leave this place, never your presence. We ask for traveling mercy and that your hand of favor be with us. Yeah. Heal us right now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, God. Heal us right now in the name of Jesus. By body, mind, soul. Heal us right now, God. Examine our souls, Lord God, and cast out anything that's not of God that's within us and holding us. Break every chain, every yoke, every stumbling block that we are stumbling over, Lord God. And we may draw closer to you. Oh, give us a clean heart and a right mind. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus. We lost our soul, Lord God. Hallelujah. Let us be renewed. Hallelujah. And this is my prayer. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Amen.